One game left of the season, Newcastle away. We're in sixth, they're in eighth. We're on 60 points, they're on 59. Yeah, it's coming down to the wire. And if that wasn't enticing enough, we have got two games today. Don't you fret. The end of season 10 is going to end with a bang. And it's going to end with our final game of the season being our first major cup final. We've made it all the way in the FA Cup. Plan of attack to end the season? Get through these two games, give you a recap and set things up nicely for a transfer special tomorrow. Let's get right into things. Yes, gang, I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today, I can't remember. What episode number are we on? 78. Yeah, 78. You'd think after years of doing YouTube, I'd remember to just check the episode number before the intro. I'm still learning. Bear with me, I'll get it eventually. Now, last episode, we got some good results. They could have been better since last episode. It's been more of the same. Good results could have been better. This result, to be fair, a great one. 4-0 against West Ham. A flurry of goals in the last five minutes made it feel much more comfortable than it was. Even though we were a goal up with, what, five minutes left? And they'd only had one shot on target until we got the second goal. I didn't enjoy this one. And then in the most recent game, we took on Wolves, a game that had we won, we'd be in a really nice, chilled, relaxed position. But we didn't win it. We drew 4-4, and Rojas missed a penalty. I, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but had he scored that penalty, it probably is a very different game. Now, as I already mentioned in the intro, we are currently in sixth. Tottenham and Newcastle sit one point behind us each, and we play Newcastle on the final day. What it means is, if we lose, we could drop down to eighth, and in fact, we'd be guaranteed to fall behind Newcastle. And due to the way the Premier League kind of qualifying rules work for European football, that might not be enough for Europa League football. Of course, the Champions League is way beyond us at this point, but if we win this final game, Europa League football over Conference League football would be great. And if we were to slip down to eighth, we actually know that if we could do with a bit of an upset and beat Arsenal, uh, we would then get the Europa League spot anyway. So there's lots to play for today. Above all, though, I'd just kind of like to win both games. That would be nice. Then we don't have to worry about all the different permutations. We've only two games played since last episode. We're going to jump straight into the first one here. Newcastle away. I know I've done the away day at St. James's Park. I remember doing it, I think, as a League Two team at Guernsey last year in a big cup game. On this occasion, we come into this game as, I think, underdogs still. Obviously, they are only one point behind us. When we played them earlier on in the year, it was in a live commentary. You might remember it. In fact, on that occasion, I think we beat them 1-0 with a last-minute penalty. So I do need more heroics today. In terms of team news... This is the team I'm going with. Can you can you spot something? Can you, the sentimentals have taken over. I know this is a must-win, really important game. I'm going to start Jake Cartwright for the first minute and then sub him off. I feel like this guy deserves some minutes. You know, he was a hero in our very first season. He joined me when I first joined the club halfway through the season. He helped us to safety. 19 goals from centre-back, you might remember. Safe to say, he has seen better days. He's leaving the club at the end of the year. And with that in mind... I thought we'd give him one game in the Premier League. If, if we now concede from the kickoff highlight, I am going to be annoyed. Elsewhere in the team, Jao Victor is sadly injured, so Forms is going to move into the defensive mid position. The plan of attack is to play NDIA at centre back. Obviously, I've discussed this throughout this year. I feel like, given the current injuries and the current situation, he's the best man to bring in for Cartwright as part of a bit of a shuffle to basically deal with the fact that we are without Jao Victor. Honestly, we don't have that many great defensive midfielders. Forms is probably the only player that can really go toe to toe with Jao Victor, but of course, he would normally just play at centre back. The rest of the team for this one is at full strength. We don't need to rest the players. The FA Cup is a little way away. So, yeah, I'm going to hope we can make something happen on the road, but this. It's not going to be easy. We do need to give Jake Cartwright a shirt number for the final game of the season. Uh, all right, what, I'll give him 99. I was going to give him a different number ending in nine, but I'm more mature than that. I like the idea that I've handed in the team sheet and there's just people confused as to who is Jake Cartwright. He's not been seen in Rugby Town Colours in about seven years and suddenly he's coming back. You know, it's like a, a wrestling reveal where he's coming from absolutely nowhere. We've got the smoke machines going. There's just a silhouette and it's just this tall man. Right, anyway, three seconds into the game. I'm um, subbing him off. Uh, can we clap him in, please? Loyal servant to the club. He's had his three minutes of fame. If it wasn't for the fact that we actually need to win today, I'll probably give him more minutes. I might even let him play the whole game. 
but we do actually need to win the game today. I get accused of being heartless and not having enough sentimentals. That is the most sentimental thing right there I will ever do in the history of this channel. Jake Cartwright, club legend, clap him in, and now I'm going to hope we can get a good result to end the year. Lee in, in at left-back, playing inside to Misiak, who slowly, I feel like, getting up to speed with Premier League football. Uh, of course, as I say that, he then does immediately give away the ball. But yeah, the, the youngster from Belgium joined us halfway through the year. He's only just turned 18, just as a reminder. He has been key for us, as has Roger Ospina. It's a 20-second goal of the season. I don't think he's going to overtake Haaland in the golden boot, but he could end the season right up there. And I suppose a lot of credit here probably should go to Bolton, shouldn't it? The right back, and I'm going to call him a right back now. I feel like he's earned that label. He's no longer a centre mid. He is definitely a right back. That is a sensational assist. Halfway through this first half, not been a flurry of action, but we've taken the lead early on. We've not needed to do too much defensively. Newcastle having plenty of the ball, but they are just having it quite deep in their half. Saying all of that, we have just given the ball to them in our own area, and now they're bringing it forward and having a shot from range, which was not a million miles away. I will also admit the people who have to deal with kick clashes. Uh, do you have a kick clash person in the Premier League? Is there someone who has to sit there and make the decision on what kits people wear? I feel like whoever that person is, they've not done a great job today. It's black shorts on black shorts, and even the referee's wearing black. It's like we're going to a funeral or something. Maybe this is Newcastle's funeral and we've been invited. Rojas, let's lower them in. Why not? Fawns, lean in on the overlap. We've seen one fullback get an assist. Could Fawns set up something here? The answer is we did create something there, and Ospina, who scored a more difficult chance earlier in the game, has missed that one there. We've not been clinical in this game, but we do find ourselves ahead. It's 1-0. There's not been a load of chances in this game, and I am going to just tell the players I'm far from pleased. Uh, Bolton is upset and confused. I feel like he's upset and confused quite a lot, this man. The good news is everyone else has reacted well, so I'm going to maintain that Shouty Shouty was the correct team we'll talk, although I will now just shout some encouragement from the sideline. You know, I can play good cop, bad cop in the dugout when everyone's around I'm good cop I'm nice to the players lock the dressing room door I turn into a different beast anyway I'm gonna hope that the team talks are gonna reward us here as we're through and Ospina scored but he's offside and I knew deep down in my heart of hearts he was offside there it was lovely build-up play quick intricate passing through the middle but this is going to be reviewed by VAR and it is going to be disallowed. It wasn't I want to say it wasn't far off I mean you could just tell couldn't you you could just yeah, you could just tell. it was He was quite far off. Half an hour left in this game. I feel like I should be making subs. So with that in mind, we'll make some subs. Okay, Misiak's not had a great game today. I'm going to bring in Ngoma for him in the final third. I'd love to bring in Alvarez, but he keeps getting injured. And he's injured again at the moment. Instead, you know what? I'm going to take off Faye and I'm going to bring in Pelagata. And elsewhere, Kurland is going to come on. I feel like I've not really sung the praises of Kurland, but he is a very, very good attacking player. He is more of a creative type versus a finisher. He's not not the best when it comes to pressing and obviously with an advanced playmaker and a deep line playmaker we have lots of other creative players in the team I don't really need strikers who are going to create stuff from nothing but when we call upon him he does a job I need him to do the job here as it wouldn't surprise me if Newcastle go on to score and we are going to need another goal inside these last 18 minutes they are bringing the ball through the middle Vera stepping forward bringing it out Dragon, or Dragon, I should say. Is he going to breathe some fire on us? The right back gives it inside to Toda. It's played inside, and that shot there by Emmerich has, I'll tell you what, it's flashed past the post. It was very, very close. It was hit with Venom. Schumacher was never going to stop that, and I'm not sure we could expect him to stop it. If that was a warning, though, we have been warned. We have to heed that warning and try and change how we approach things defensively, he says, whilst making no tactical changes. You know, that was that was their first real highlight of the half, I feel like. And now maybe we can make something happen going forward. In Goma, donning the captain's armband, losing out on the ball. Dragon bringing it inside here and switching the play nicely to Garcia, who has a little bit of space to stretch his legs the left back. Gives it inside. Emmerich, Vera, Newcastle playing some nice football. Ryan is through and Schumacher. I've, I've slated him a lot this year. That was a great save. Take a bow. We've still got the corner to deal with, so let's not get partying too hard just yet. The job is not done, but the big man dressed as a banana, he's collected another there. Fawns and Riviere are absolutely exhausted at defensive mid. I only actually have one sub left because, of course, I, I wasted a sub already. Uh, annoyingly, I don't really have a player to bring in for Fawns in terms of defensive midfielders. I think that's something that might be on the shopping list for the summer. So instead, I'm going to bring in Gomez for Riviere. 
We've got, what, 10 minutes to try and see out this game. Newcastle have had a lot of the ball throughout, but in the second half, they have definitely started to create more. And now they've got a corner, which they are going to score. And Pierre Kalulu nods it in. I feel like this year we've actually been really, really good at set pieces. I feel like we've not even conceded that many. That one there... A disappointing time to concede, I suppose. Now, it is worth noting, a draw here is not enough to see Newcastle go above us. Here are the live scores, by the way. The only one we really care about is Tottenham. They are currently drawing against Manchester United. So, as things stand, we won't actually lose any places in spite of not winning here. In fact, we're guaranteed to finish out of Newcastle with a draw. Naturally, I don't want a draw. We're not playing for the draw. We are going to be fearlessly playing for the win here and hoping we can make something happen late on. Forms with the ball. He's had a very good game, the defensive midfielder, trying to pick out Kurland. Not the best ball forward, but we do still have it here. Lee Min, you have been one of my players of the season this year, the left back. He lays it back to Forms. He might lay it inside. Ospina to Bolton. He got an assist earlier. I and he's, he's, he scored that there. That is like Vincent Company when he scored that goal for Man City to win them the league. It might be to only get a sixth place in the Premier League. But what a way to do it. I mean, in terms of satisfactory finishes, the way it's cannoned in off the crossbar is like a 10 out of 10, isn't it? I mean, I feel like we should, you know, savour it. I was going to say, I feel like we shouldn't get too carried away. I'm going to get carried away. We're going to win this game. There's four minutes left. They're not going to score. That goal there has destroyed them emotionally. And, I mean, we won 1-0 against Newcastle with a late penalty last time we played them. Slightly different way of doing it this time. Michael Bolton, a goal and an assist. He's a right back. He's a, no one can convince me otherwise. He loves big matches. I feel like we've just seen that there. Sometimes a goal goes in and I kind of really overreact or I think after the fact, I think should have reacted more. This is definitely more on that side of the spectrum where I should have gone more crazy. That is a ridiculous goal. But I feel like at the same time, celebrating sick for too much would be a bit tin pot. What it does mean though is that regardless of what happens in the FA Cup, we will be in the Europa League next year, not the Conference League. So there's a little less pressure on winning the FA Cup. But of course, it's the FA Cup final. I want to win the FA Cup. So with that result there, you can see we are in sixth place. It does right now say that we've only got a conference league spot. That is just due to the way that seeding and stuff works. Essentially, if the winner of the FA Cup is a team outside the top eight, we would be in the conference league. But given the fact it's ourselves and Arsenal, who are already in European competitions playing in that final, irrespective of what happens, we will be inheriting a Europa League spot. Apparently we scraped a win. I'm not having that. We've earned that win. What a performance, Michael. Elsewhere, by the way, Brighton relegated on the final day of the season, taking on their rivals in Crystal Palace. Fulham survive on the final day. Absolutely sensational scenes. Fulham won 3-0 on the final day to climb out the drop zone. And Brighton, Brighton relegated. We might have to have a look at some of their players come the summer. Other important thing to note here, for finishing sixth, we actually get £29 million. Pounds. I'm going to round it up because it sounds more impressive. Yeah, the prize money for all the different positions in the Premier League is actually quite significant. You can see here, £29 million pounds for finishing sixth. If we hadn't won that last game, well, we might have only got £27 million, which I'll admit is still a lot of money, but it's still £2 million less than what we have got. Also, please don't read into this too much, but I am currently scouting Guerrero. Don't read into it too much. I don't need another attacking mid, but I miss him. Anyway, that result was really, really good. And sadly, we are without Jal Victor for this next game. But we've got to dust ourselves off and try and get a result against Arsenal. Historically, we've not done well against them. In fact, we've played them three times and conceded three goals on each occasion. We need to book that trend at Wembley. Don't go anywhere. It's our first shot at Major Silverware. And it's coming up in six days' time. I feel like these are always really special moments in Park to Prem. Your first major cup final. Rugby Town's first cup final appearance in the 77-year history of the club. We're playing at Wembley. We're playing against an Arsenal team who right now have just finished the season third. And we've never beaten. If there's a time to beat them, it'd be quite a good time to do it now. Now, it's important to know that we will get all our budgets and stuff set after the game today. So we've got that to look forward to following on from this match. We've got £65 million in the bank, which is exciting. Transfer budget is left over from last year. I've already started getting busy in the market, though. Matthew Martin has just turned 18, and I've swooped in for him. I was waiting for his 18th birthday for him to be interested in joining us. He is ridiculous. He can play right back, but to be honest, I kind of just see him as a really athletic centre-back for the future. As I said, he's just turned 18, model citizen personality. 
£8 million, the fee I think I'm going to have to pay for him. And as part of that loan agreement, he will go back to Hibs for the year and play for them next year regularly. Played 17 games for them in the league and he's been developing nicely. I'll let you guys decide whether or not that's good or bad value for money but I do like the look of him a lot. Anyway, this is not a transfer special, so I don't know why we're talking about transfers. It is the only deal going on right now. Really, we should be focusing on the biggest deal of all, this game here. Now, in terms of team news, important to remember, you're only allowed seven subs in this FA Cup as part of this save game. The rules are slightly different to the ones in real life because of the database we use. I've talked about it before. But yes, seven subs, with that in mind, I'm not having a goalkeeper on the bench. I feel like every spot is valuable. Here is the bench options we've got. The big headline decision, I suppose. I have dropped Alvarez. Didn't need a fitness test, but he's lacking match sharpness. And David scored a hat-trick in the semi-final at Wembley. So I feel like he just deserves a spot on the bench at the very least. In terms of the starting eleven, I want to say it's the team that started last game. It, there's no Jake Cartwright. I'm sorry to the Jake Cartwright fan club. NDIA, though, sliding in at centre-back. The rest of the team remains unchanged. If I was going to change anything, it would be dropping Misiak. But to be honest, when you look at the list of players that could possibly fill in for him at centre-attacking mid, and Goma's not been in great form. Pelagata, you can maybe bring in, but... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to keep faith with the 18-year-old. I feel like we need to give him moments on the big stage to shine. This can be one such moment. Important to remember, too, as we take on this Arsenal team, Sneddon, our right centre-back, is playing against his former club. He was sold to us from them in January for a pretty hefty £28 million fee. He's going to want to exact some revenge. Here is their team, which is actually full of a surprisingly number of actual Arsenal players. Considering we're 10 years into the future, so I think have four or five of their current squad in real life's team still at the club is somewhat mad. Obviously, some older players, some experienced players, probably the one thing we're lacking is experience. I feel like in terms of our run this year in the FA Cup, it's almost been easier than last year's FA Cup run where we knocked out a couple of Premier League teams on the way to the semi-final where we were dispatched by Manchester United. I'm hoping we can show as much fight in this game as we did against Middlesbrough. Um, somewhat concerning, I suppose, given the fact we're less than 20 minutes in. Both my fullbacks are on buckings. Yeah, uh, the last thing we want in this game is to go down a man. Arsenal now trying to make something happen. First highlight of the game, Martinelli cutting inside. And he's finesse-shotted that off the crossbar. That is a little warning, isn't it? That things aren't going to be sunshine and rainbows today all the time. We are going to have our back up against the wall. And well, speaking of sunshines and rainbows, there's no sunshine today. It's a bloody miserable day in London. Just look at the rain. It feels sad. It's like it's portraying a mood. It's like it's foreshadowing or something. I feel like I'm going to end this match feeling sad. And yet I want to feel positive. I want to feel optimistic. But well, when you look at history and past meetings, it's difficult to really debate a way in which we come into this game as favourites nor or should expect to win. But you know what? On our day, we've caused upsets this year. We've got to look at the positives. Why am I feeling such like such a negative Nelly? Let's remain positive, although Martinelli has the ball. João Neves laying it wide. Lee Min reads it. Misiak to Ospina. Tell you what, Roger Rojas was running the line. We've still got Lee Min continuing his run down the line too. The South Korean lays it inside. Riviere into the box. Balls to Rojas. And I don't quite know how it's got to him. Faye was in a bit of a kerfuffle with the centre-back, but it found its way through and the Costa Rican bags a goal. Lee Min with one of his defence-splitting runs. He laid it inside to Riviere, who, well, didn't have the best of passes here. And following a bit of a kerfuffle, as I mentioned, Rojas had the ball at his feet and he did not make a mistake. Good to get a goal ahead, but as we saw last game, yeah, we're not great defensively. We've not kept that many clean sheets this year, and against a team with as many attackers as Arsenal that are capable of scoring, I know it's going to be a tall order. Given the fact that we've conceded nine goals against them in three meetings, suspect we're going to need more than one goal in this game if we want to get the win. Misiak to Faye. This is lovely build-up play. Faye, by the way, one of the best-rated players in the FA Cup this year... And for a moment, I thought his rating was about to go even higher. He could have had an assist. Lee Min, not known for his finishing ability, mind you. Okay, highlight starting with Schumacher clutching onto the ball. I mean, it looks like he's time-wasting already. We're in the 42nd minute, but you know what? I kind of rate it. Slow down the game, kill the momentum, or alternatively, give them the ball. Saka's in behind. Saka, he's scored against us before... On this occasion, Schumacher's going to say, you're not scoring again. How much added time at the end of this half? There's going to be two minutes. They've come, they've gone. We're up at the break. When you look at that XG story, 
We've not created a lot, but when we have created stuff, it's been good. Okay, you know what? Last game I criticised the players and they all cried. I'm going to do it again. I already know Rojas is going to cry and so is Schumacher and Thorns. Right, I'll chat to them all individually. Maybe I should have just praised them, but then they would have been complacent. I'm going to tell them that they're doing well. Keep it up. And you know what? They've all stood up and clapped. I'm a genius. Although, for some reason, San Fe is now angry. What a weirdo. I feel like the games today so far, they've not been super high-scoring affairs, which feels weird for Rugby Town. But you know what? A calm end to the year. Don't mind that. This end of the season could be even calmer if we were to get the next goal in this game. Extending our lead to do would just allow me to breathe slightly. Schumacher, though, with the ball at the back. Arsenal are playing with two strikers. They are pressing both our centre-backs. So when we're playing out from the back, we are feeling quite reliant on our wing-backs. Speaking of which, as I say that, Snedden finds himself with some time and space and we suddenly rip them open through the middle and but for a last-ditch tackle, Arsenal could have been on the back foot there. Instead, though, they've wrestled back possession and now they are looking to start the second half better than they ended the first. Ortiz is dispossessed by Thorns, but he can't get to his feet and Ortiz will get to the ball again. There is one man taken from the middle and, oh my word, Schumacher, I've talked about replacing him this summer, he's made another save. He, I, I, I had it in my head I was going to get rid of him. I still think I will get rid of him, but he's put in a man-of-the-match performance so far. He might be tested again, though. Arsenal still have the ball here. Martinelli crosses it. They've scored. I'm selling him. Get Schumacher out the door. I agree. I've just read the comment section. Yeah, I agree. He's overrated. Honestly, when he made the initial save, I thought, well, that's the highlight dealt with. Uh, it, it wasn't a highlight dealt with. Martinelli looping it in from one wing to the other. And Saka's downward header squirms under the keeper. Okay, we only get three subs in this competition, just as a little reminder. Bolton is having such an uncharacteristically poor game in this game, and Lehman's not playing great either. I'm going to go for a bit of an unusual shuffle in this one. I'm going to bring in Gasperi at left centre-back, and then move NDIA to left wing-back. And over on the right-hand side, I'm going to take off Bolton, and I'm going to bring in Mosquera. I feel like the right-back on occasion has turned up big for us. I don't really want to risk losing one of our wing-backs. With how wide Arsenal play, a lot of the players going through them, and both of them are on kind of bookings, walk, walking a tightrope. Elsewhere in the team, though, with only one sub left, I can't really afford to make another change this soon. Of course, what would be very on brand now is if we concede immediately. But I'm hoping with fresh legs in the wide area, we can get a little bit of width going forward, work out luck, and maybe make something happen from a set piece. NDIA has tried to travella that on the outside of his foot. He didn't get enough bend on it, but it wasn't a million miles away. I'm going to shout words of encouragement. I might have the, the shouting of encouragement too late, though. Although, FaZe won the ball there. Ospina can't win the nod on. If he had, we had a chance to make something happen. Instead, Snedden nods it back into the grateful clutches of Schumacher. The tension is tense, ladies and gentlemen, to quote a Work the Space classic commentary line. There is 21 minutes in this game at Wembley. The rain has ceased, but Arsenal are not relenting. And in fact, it's Havertz putting in one deflection or rather interception. He couldn't get the second and now we're through again. Faye through the middle, goes down in a heap. It falls to Misiak from absolutely nowhere. Ramsdale is forced into a save. And now we have a corner. There's big meaty men to aim for. Can we find one of them? Snedden against his former club is under it. But it's headed away from him and away from danger, I think. Unless, I mean, if, unless, football manager. Unless you want to make something spicy happen. Okay, never mind. Saka, thrown the ball short. Fawns gets there once, gets there twice, clears it away. But Antonio Silva bringing the ball out. Faye, though, snatches it off the centre-back for a moment. I thought the counter-attack was on. It's now in Martinelli. Arsenal have had a lot of the ball here, but we have managed to steal it away here. And Rojas is no slouch in possession. A quick dribbler of the ball. Opts to run back on himself and wait for on runners ahead. Sadly, we couldn't get the ball switched across successfully. And yet, well, his possession is switched back and forth yet again. Arsenal come away with it. Ortiz, not for the first time down this right-hand side. At the back post is Cho. Sneddon nods it off his head. Havertz, though, edge the box. King Kai cutting inside and putting a dagger through the heart of the jester that is Rugby Town. It's 2-1. We've battled so hard in this game. I thought we'd done enough here as Sneddon got his head real away, but Kai Havertz bringing the ball forward, brings it all the way, and then Schumacher, who, I'll be honest, he's had a great game today. He's made some big saves. He's beaten at the near post, and he will feel disappointed about that. Okay, folks, we need we, we need something, don't we, at this point. I have to change something up. What do I change is the golden question. Misiak's been poor today. I am going to bring in Pietro Pellegatta at advanced playmaker. 
in terms of what else you do here, I mean, I could move Rivier slightly further up the pitch, I suppose. But in committing him forward, we are going to be leaving ourselves open. I suppose in the grand scheme of things, we kind of just got to go for it now anyway, haven't we? Going to just try and up the directness just a little bit. I still want us to play it out from the back, but in terms of getting the ball forward, let's just try and get it into dangerous areas that little bit quicker. We've been up against it a lot in this second half. Arsenal have been the better team, it has to be said. I mean, they're the better team on paper. We've fought them hard, though. I feel like that is worth reiterating. There's 10 minutes left. Committing men slightly further up the pitch at this point, although we already play such an attacking system. In situations like this, it's difficult to find a means by which to go more attacking. And in doing so, we might leave ourselves open at the back. Their shot there hits the woodwork. There is five minutes left. I'll get shouty shouty at this point. I'm going to do the, the band technique of going very attacking. When does very attacking ever work in Football Manager? The answer is almost never, but I'm going to hope it can work out today. There is added time to be played. Six minutes of it. Can we muster up one last courageous effort? I already know the answer. You know the answer. No. The FA Cup is heading back to the Emirates. And, well, they went into this game as favourites. I really hoped we could fight hard against them. And, well, you know what? I think, to be fair, we did battle hard. Just not hard enough. I feel like so far in this save game, whenever we go to Wembley, we're largely just left with disappointment. It's another occasion where I have to witness another team lift a trophy in front of us. And yeah, I don't like being the bridesmaid. I want to be the bride. Failure is hard to take. I'm disappointed. But you know what? We still had a bloody good season. 2-1 isn't even disrespectful. I feel like it's the fact that it was so close and actually we had the lead in the game for a little bit. That makes it sting that little bit more. Like already mentioned though, our qualification spot in the Europa League was already guaranteed. So we will be playing in Europe next year. I mean, let's just be real for a moment. Newly promoted team. We went into this season with some very, very high, big expectations. Well, I did. The, the media didn't have high, high expectations of us. Ultimately. We finished sixth as a newly promoted team. That is, that's pretty bloody incredible. I mean, I'll admit, it's not quite Leicester City finishing just outside the relegation zone going on to win the league like in real life, but it's not that far away. Now, I'm hoping if we get to tomorrow, the budgets will be updated for the coming season and stuff. I, I'm hoping, but I'm not seeing the inbox items yet. At some point, our budget should be updated. Unless I've only got £13 million to spend. In which case, signing Matthew Martin for £8 million probably isn't that smart. Of course, with one click of continue later, I'm informed. Do I want to sign Matthew Martin? And at the same time, the budgets are set four minutes later. Before we hit accept here, what kind of budgets are we going to have for next season? I'm imagining the wage budget is going to explode a little bit because it was already quite small for a Premier League club. The transfer budget, I'd like to think, will be healthy as well. And well, here is your answer. £900,000 a week wage budget set, transfer budget, £55 million. To put that into context, we're currently only spending, I was going to say only, we're spending £850,000. So if we want to sign anyone big, we might need to rejig the budget slightly. But I think it does go without saying, this is still a bloody lot of money to have to spend. Well, signing players is one concern. I think another concern we've got to have here is the interest in our players. There's a few players in here who are going to have popped on the radar of the footballing elite. And fending them off is going to be half the task this coming year. I mean, ultimately, when you look at the board feedback and the supporter feedback, it has been an incredible year. And to be fair, it has. It's just a shame it ends on a low point. And actually, before we do the end of season wrap up bit, there's one thing I want to show you, because I think this is absolutely incredible. This year, we finished sixth. You're not going to believe the XG table. On expected goals alone, we could have finished as high as second. The thing that let us down, we conceded eight more goals than our expected goals against. And without throwing anyone under the bus, I, you're thinking it and I'm thinking it. Goalkeeper this summer is the main thing. Undoubtedly, a thing that is going to be tricky for this coming year is competing on more fronts. European football next year, combined with league football, is going to mean that the advantage we had this year just gone of not having to juggle a load of games is now going to become our biggest Achilles heel. We are going to have to juggle games. The squad needs depth. The squad needs to be better across the board. I feel like there's cutthroat decisions that have to be made. And players like Miyazawa, as much as I love Miyazawa, 
might have to be sold in the pursuit of better depth. Whilst the next season might be a bit of suffering from success, we're going to worry about that later. I feel like to finish sixth again next year is going to be an incredibly difficult task just because the challenge of having way more games to play is rather extreme. And second season syndrome, I feel like even in Football Manager, is very much a thing. Here is, however, our end of season review. Signing of the year went to Mosquera for £2.5 million. Given how good this guy is, I think it's somewhat difficult to disagree. I suppose the biggest issue I've got is this guy is a very, very good right back, although he might have already fulfilled his potential. I already have a really, really good right back in Michael Bolton, though. Like, if you could only pick one, who are you going to play? I feel like when you look at the polygons, it becomes kind of obvious. And my concern is, before Mosquera gets unhappy, would it be a terrible idea to try and sell him for like £80 million, having signed him for £2.5 million the year before? I feel like that would be quite a Brighton transfer in real life, wouldn't it? You know, sign a South American for cheap, flog him onto Chelsea. I should ring up Chelsea, £80 million and they can have him. Elsewhere in terms of signings, Lee Min right up there is a great transfer this year. 7.2 rate for him, came out into his own. Definitely caused me some issues and a bit of a headache when it came to who do we play at left back, but his performances were sensational. And actually, a thing that is even more pleasing about this guy is the fact he's improved so much. He has got great potential still, and he's showing like the fact that he has got room to develop. It's a really nice problem to have. I mean, in terms of transfers out, there weren't any super high-profile ones. I'm trying to think of the biggest one. It was probably Zitto, wasn't it, to Ipswich Town, who we sold for £22.5 million. He got 13 goals in the championship for Ipswich United, uh, who ended up finishing 7th. I feel like last year we really didn't have to sell that many players for the sake of generating funds, and whilst I don't necessarily need to sell players to generate funds for this coming year... If the right offers are out there, there's definitely players I'd be willing to sell while their stocks are high in a not dissimilar way to the way in which we sold Diego Marino. Uh, just a reminder, we sold him for £9.5 million. He had an awful season in the Premier League. I think he showed here he's just not a Premier League quality player, albeit it's difficult to play for a team like Luton who were predicted to finish down near the bottom. I feel like we were quite justified in our decision to sell him. In terms of end of season results, sixth place is absolutely crazy. I think at the start of the year, I said I felt like a top half finish was possible. If I was feeling ambitious, maybe European football's on the cards. Ultimately, to get 63 points is an absolutely insane total. Nice to finish as well with a big cushion over the likes of Tottenham and Newcastle, who of course slipped up on the final day as we managed to get a win. Elsewhere, there were a few teams like Everton, who I think probably will have expected to do much, much better last year. Everton finished sixth last year. They were really disappointing, especially at the end of the season. Although, what I would say is for them, they are a team who are not really used to playing European football. And in this save game, the end of the season, you can see when the fixtures really started to pile up, they just couldn't cope with them. That is something that scares me slightly for our fortunes next year. Not really surprising. Biggest win was the 7-0 against Ipswich Town. Moment to remember happened in the first episode of the season. The 6-0 result and goal of the season was Pelagata against Crystal Palace in the game where Guerrero scored. I didn't want to be reminded of this game. Goes without saying, when you get to the Premier League, money like rains from the skies. Here is the finances last year versus this year. £90 million in broadcast revenue, competition prize money also, like over £30 million in an increase. Sponsorships went up as well. European football next year is going to mean we should see even better improvements next year. Here is the team that we lined up with for the bulk of the year. Uh, do I agree with this? I think I do, although the fact that Fawns and Snedden are the wrong way around is really upsetting me. Fawns is left-footed, Snedden is right-footed. Whilst neither of these guys got particularly good average ratings, I think the fact that we finished as high as we did in the league is kind of just testament to how good they were at the back. And also, because of how bad Schumacher was at actually stopping shots for a lot this year, our centre-backs didn't really get clean sheets that perhaps they deserved because we conceded soft goals a lot, if that makes sense. Essentially, I'm trying to blame the centre-back low rating on the fact our goalkeeper was bad, even though our goalkeeper got a higher rating. I do just feel like the match rating system in Football Manager is flawed. You can see here, Young Player of the Year went to Sam Fay, Signing of the Year went to Mosquera, Fans Player of the Year went to Sam Fay as well. I feel like it's somewhat difficult to argue against this guy being right up there. What I will warn you guys about is... He's currently unhappy. He wants a new contract to reflect his ability. He's got five years left on £9,000 a week. He shouldn't have signed that contract if he wasn't happy. But I might need to give him a new contract soon. I know someone's going to ask as well, Jack, why did you train him with the player trait this year? Looks for pass rather than attempting to score. The answer to that is I didn't train him in that. He randomly picked it up 
And I don't know who he picked it up off. Do you ever get it where you get the inbox item where it just tells your players have just got kind of traits from other members of the squad? I don't know who taught Sam Faye to pass, but they're an idiot. He's got better finishing than passing. I'm going to try and get him to forget that over the summer. For the first time as well in Rugby Town history, we have a season ticket wait list of 2,000 supporters. I've not had any updates on the new stadium yet. Maybe there'll be some before next season comes around. And actually, one thing that I think is worth talking about now is people have observed the fact that, in spite of the fact we have one whole ground that is empty in the match engine, we were still getting like sellouts of 5,240 fans to our games. Uh, football managers have just bugged with stadiums this year. I don't really understand it because you can see here our capacity for seated games is only 2,000 and our used capacity is 5,240. What I think's happened is that this year in Football Manager they've added in some kind of thing to factoring safe standing, which is obviously being rolled out across England in certain football grounds. And as part of that, our stadium has got caught up in the new standing stuff. Obviously, in the Premier League, you need more than 2,000 seats ordinarily. In past part to Brems, we've moved stadiums. This year around, when we've been playing part to Brems, we've just been stuck at Butlin Road. Um, yeah, I don't really know how the attendance and crowds just worked. I know it doesn't make sense. I'm just accepting it's one of those weird football manager things. Okay, board expectations for next year. They want us to reach the latter stages of the Europa League, finish mid-table in the Premier League. Then the year after that, top half Premier League finish. We get one sixth place and they really up the goals, but feel like we should be able to do them. I have just done the end of season meeting. It's the same as every other season meeting that I've done as part of this save game. I just tell the players what they want to hear and they all stand up and clap. I really wish that this part of the game was just a little bit more engaging. Now, earlier on this year, I did mention the fact we had a new affiliation with Horsham. You may have also noticed here, I don't have the affiliation with Loughborough anymore. I decided to cancel it with the university because they just weren't in a playable league. And even before they got relegated, none of my players wanted to join them anyway. But some good news here is uh, Chester didn't get promoted. They let us down. But Horsham, who'd only been in the National League for one year prior to this year, got promoted via the playoffs. So next year, we will have two affiliates in League Two, which should actually provide two really good clubs to send some of our academy prospects to to develop. I am hoping if I hit continue here, maybe I get a little stadium update to end the year, but I uh, don't know if we will. We will, we will get one. I take it all back. The Rugby Town Stadium will cost £34 million. That's a lot of money. It's going to have a capacity of 24000 which is above what they were planning for previously. So that's nice. And yeah, it's going to be completed in two years' time. Two years. Does that mean I have to play at Butlin Road for the next two seasons? That could be annoying. I don't even know if this stadium is like big enough to be played in European games. It does say here that all the different European competitions can be played at our ground. So, so maybe we're just going to play at Butlin Road for two years. I don't know if it's still the case, but it used to be that you could actually rename stadiums in Football Manager. You know, in the same way you install a real name fix to stop Juventus being called Zebra or whatever it used to be. Uh, essentially, in Football Manager, you can do the same thing with ground. So maybe we should come up with a new name for this stadium. If you have any suggestions for it, please let me know them down below. Yeah, maybe we'll pick one out and when it's built, I'll actually name it a name. Because the Rugby Town Stadium is just a bit of a sad boring name, isn't it? Also, I'm going to have to get a stadium picture sorted. Anyway, to wrap things up today, I do want to quickly just touch upon the squad. I'm not going to go too in-depth. We'll save that for the transfer special. But for next year, I'm thinking against bigger clubs, I need to have a slightly more conservative system than this 4-2-2-2. It's really, really good at applying pressure and overwhelming weaker teams, but against better teams, we struggle. So I've gone away and I've cooked. And over the last couple of months, I have been thinking about this ahead of time. I have a plan. I'm going to clap and the new plan is going to appear. I really hope that editing Jack has edited that seamlessly. There's just one clap and now the new thing's in front of us. He might have just left me awkwardly changing everything in between, in which case the magic is lost. But this is what I'm thinking for next year. Have I overcooked it? I'll let you guys be the judge. I feel like Lee Min is a very good wing back, but because of how much he lacks kind of in terms of stuff like flair and off the ball, maybe just playing him as a fullback on attack is a better decision to make for him. Just rely on his defensive ability a little bit more. And with that done, you might have noticed the more exciting changes. 
happen further forward, where we're going to ditch the box midfield, I think, in favour of having two wide attacking players in Pelagata and Faye. Faye can play out on the right-hand side a little bit, so I'm going to train him to play out there some more. Pietro, on the other hand, can play out on the right-hand side, can't play on the left-hand side yet, but actually... As an inside forward on support, I feel like he ticks a lot of the boxes in this area. Maybe needs to work on his athleticism a little bit, but I think he could slot into this role well. And then Misiak can play through the middle. It means that I get my three best young attacking mids all into the team, which I think is good. Obviously, the, the kind of team behind doesn't really change that much. And in fact, I am thinking to start next year... I will try NDIA at centre-back. I know he has awful marking and awful tackling. And ordinarily, and in past save games, I'd almost have a principle. A player like this, with this distribution of technicals, I wouldn't play at centre-back. But I have trialled it to end this year. You can see he's played centre-back 12 times. He's actually putting better performances at centre-back than at left-back. And in fact, I think he would have had our highest rating as a centre-back for this year just gone. So I am thinking alongside Snedden, he could be a really, really good partner. And in fact, actually, when you compare the two of them, I feel like they're quite complementary to one another. And also up front, it does mean that we would have to drop one of our two strikers. I think Rojas is just our best striker in the team. I'm currently trying to get him to forget the traits, come short to get the ball, because I feel like as the lone forward, don't really want him coming short so much. What it would mean is that Ospina drops down to the bench, although as a super sub option, he could have been an amazing striker. Of course, this year he did go 10 hours without scoring a goal and that kind of lack of reliability scares me slightly he did get 20 goals in the premier league which if we actually just look at the kind of goal scoring charts does have him right up there but to be fair rojas got the exact same number of goals and i do just feel like by having one striker the attacking mid set up in a way where our best young players are on the pitch and a slightly more solid defensive base perhaps this could be a better way to approach the big teams next year I think. Uh, you'll notice as well, there's a gap where the goalkeeper would be. Aim for next episode, get a goalkeeper, which will be coming your way tomorrow. You're going to want to watch it and make sure you're here for it to end the week. We've got money to burn. A little bit of a shame that we couldn't end season 10 with some major silverware winning an FA Cup, but to finish sixth place, make it to a major cup final are two really great achievements. We've got a young, exciting squad with bags and bags of potential, potentially a new tactical system to try and fit some players into next year. I think the transfer window is going to involve some wheeling and dealing. I'll see you guys for it tomorrow. I'm out.